Oh boy, oh boy, here we go again, guys. Back to work. Hope you made some money today. Hope you grabbed at least one of the trades we talked about last night. Maybe that, maybe that perfect pullback off the high or that beautiful double bottom reversal. It's back to work, though. I don't care how much money you guys made today. We're only as good as our next trading day. It's Wednesday evening. We're getting ready for a big Thursday. We got some big news tomorrow, potentially some really good reversals on our radar for tomorrow. We're going to talk about all my favorite trades in tonight's video that will give a game plan as always a game plan to make money uh, on Thursday this week uh, before we jump in and get this party going tonight we got a lot we're going to cover in a very important video before we get started though make sure you subscribe to our channel that we don't miss tomorrow night's video and if you enjoyed the video tonight do me a favor as always I appreciate you guys tuning in hit that like button give me a shout out in the comments section thank you guys so much for tuning in and supporting the channel tonight but enough of the intro Joe Thursday is not going to trade itself Boy, the name of the game tomorrow is reversals, reversals, reversals. And we'll talk a lot more about why I say that as we go deeper into the video. Everything's bearish overall, right? S&P bearish, NASDAQ bearish, oil uh, very bearish right now. But I'll tell you right now, though, on the S&P and the NASDAQ, the buyers have just a beautiful opportunity here for a rip off of that low as they continue that double bottom reversal that we talked about in last night's video. So I definitely think there's some great money making potential on the way higher. And remember, we still are an overall bear bias. I would love to get some reversals off the high. And so we'll talk about how to time those entries because you know timing those reversals off the high can be a bit tricky. So we have a lot of important stuff to talk about on the S&P and NASDAQ. Oil, oil is pretty straightforward over Overall bearish on oil. We get some key levels on the oil right below us right now. So we're we're anticipating possibly another perfect pullback on crude tomorrow. We'll talk about that and we'll go into more detail on the oil. Now, speaking of tomorrow, tomorrow's a Thursday. We have some big news tomorrow morning. GDP tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time. Nah, nobody cares about that jobless claims report. Nobody cares about that. The big number tomorrow is that GDP, that, that GDP report at 8.30. I will definitely be listening in for Raphael Bostic at 10.50 and any other, any other Fed speakers that may decide to jump in front of a microphone tomorrow morning. We we know the markets are obsessed with the Fed right now. Everything the Fed says right now, all the Fed speakers are really moving these markets. So those are the two big catalysts that we have here tomorrow. And then don't forget, we've got the biggest news of the week coming on Friday morning. So you, be you better not miss tomorrow night's video because we'll talk about the breakdown to trade that personal income number uh, on Friday. But let's get back to our charts though. Now you guys know where the big catalysts are on the radar for tomorrow. Remember, the money is made uh, on the charts in front of us. Now, speaking of money, if you like making money, I would definitely make sure you watch this entire video here tonight because I'm going to go over all my favorite trades on each one of these markets. Remember, what I talk about on the S&P and the SPY will directly apply to the NASDAQ and the QQQ. We talk about ideas on the crude oil. It can definitely be applied to the S&P and the NASDAQ. So remember, don't just bail on me after your favorite chart is done because because every trade I talk about tonight can be applied to your favorite market. Let's start first tonight, though, on the S&P. We'll go to the NASDAQ, and then we'll wrap things up uh, on the crude oil uh, futures. Boy, what a beautiful example of that perfect pullback that we talked about in last night's video. I don't think they get any better than that, right? Perfect with a capital perfect on that one. Anyways, if you watched last night's video, you were ready for the depth of that pullback and to make some money on that drop. And of course, all the way back down that nice jump. I just wish this bounce would have happened earlier this morning. I just wish it would happen earlier in the day. Anyways, I digress. Uh, real quickly here on the S&P. First of all, this is a 10,000 tick chart. These are all tick charts here tonight guys you can see the time frames in the upper left hand corner this is the 21 EMA 21 EMA and then don't forget I give you guys additional time frames down the description of the YouTube video if you want a bigger picture look uh, a 60 minute time frame four hour time frames these will make a great companion for tonight's video so I would definitely grab those links in the description grab the grab the 60 minute grab the four hour and you'll see kind of 
where we are in the big picture and that those charts are helping me uh, find my favorite trades uh, for tomorrow. So now that you know what you're looking at and where to get more info in the description, what's the most important factor um, happening right now? Well, we're definitely overall bearish, right? We're overall bearish. The 60 minute chart is a bear bias. But you'll notice though, we are currently rotating off the low of this range. Now we do a lot of work with ranges in our trade room, in our video classes. The one thing about range is they love to rotate, right? And so you can see what happened, right? They kind of bounce around back and forth in this range. And now look what's happening. Now they're trying to make that rotation uh, back higher here. We're very bearish overall, but I'll tell you the buyers have a great, great opportunity here right now to make, to, to make a relatively strong move uh, going higher potentially up to take out this high at 40.25. And if they really get what they want there, up around that pendulum swing at that 40.63 and three quarters. The NASDAQ, you might notice, is already up there, right? NASDAQ already finished off that move. We'll grab the NASDAQ here in a moment. Now, what would my favorite trades for tomorrow be on the S&P chart? And we'll talk about the NASDAQ here in a moment. Don't you don't you worry. My, my two favorite trades right now, there really are a lot of ways to make money on this. For example, um, as we go higher, knowing this market wants to go higher and take out these highs and rotate, there's pretty easy money to be, to be made off of what we call bear traps. And we talked about this last night briefly on the video, right? As we rotate going higher, one of my favorite trade is that bear trap, right? or trap low, just as we talk about in our free trading course, I would love to have that channel be used. Man, that'd be a great way to trade this, take out those highs, take out that pendulum swing. My favorite trade for tomorrow, though, are reversals. Reversals in a range like this, you got to think reversals are by far the best way to make money. That means, of course, as we go higher, trading that reversal back down into that range. I'm going to talk about three different ways to trade that reversal because these can be tricky to time the entries because you've got all of that momentum coming off the high. So we'll talk about that in a moment. And I also like the idea of the reversal off the low. You know, we talked about we talked about this last night, right? We talked about that perfect pullback, that retest of that low, bears once, bears twice, buying into stops like this. So we, we, so we have some ways. I like the idea of buying off that low as well. So boy, we have a lot to cover tomorrow, right? We don't know what's going to happen. So I want to make sure we, are, we have a game plan and uh, that way you guys have a roadmap to make money no matter what happens. So again, as we go higher here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover first as we go higher. And then later on in the video, I'll cover as we go lower. All right, we'll cover that. We'll cover all the, all the bases here. So make sure you get comfortable, take some screenshots. And if you've got any questions too, hit me up in the comment section. I got questions down in the comment section. As we go higher, if we go higher, we should be going higher here right now. As we go higher here, keep an eye again for those bear traps. These are the exactly like I teach them in the free trading course, right? Exactly as I teach them in the free class. Now, again, I'd love to get like a channel off that anchor there, off that low. That'd be a great way to be a buyer as we go higher, right? So keep that in mind as we're going higher. Now, if we make our way all the way up, right? Now we have some concerns about momentum right momentum so the key is is as we go higher what what my goal will be ultimately is to trap in the bulls right kind of use some bull traps up here because of all of the bullish momentum I want to try to get the buyers to take the bait right kind of walk into a trap and use their stops ultimately as fuel to turn this thing around and go lower right because momentum will be a challenge and to do that there are really two basic strategies I use with traps like that. So the first one is called a crown reversal. So as we go higher, anticipating now, there's a lot of bull momentum, right? Anticipating now, the buyers are going to want to hold this and try to rip this thing going higher. And they might do that, by the way. And I have a game plan for that. So we're going to talk about that um, in about uh, two or three minutes here. So don't go anywhere. Now, again, a lot of momentum, right? Think about, think about bull traps. Think about using buyers' stops as fuel as we pull back let them try once pull it back low remember buyers want to buy low right they want to buy low so as it pulls back more buyers enter the market get those buyers to wrap that rope around their neck right literally let them try once let them try twice load the boat with the buyers now think about what the stops are 
right? Think about where, no, think about where their pain is. That's the key, right? One of my first mentors 15, 16 years ago always said, think about where you'd be in pain and that's where you want to be hitting them, right? And this is exactly what I want to do here. What you want is a crown reversal is a trap high. It's basically a two try for the buyers, a nice juicy signal candle. We talk about signal candles in the uh, in the free trading course and then look for that right look for that drop back down into that range that is one of the three ways we can short this bearish reversal off the high you want number two number two up next all right i'm glad you said yes here the next one is with that strong run up now Remember, with this rotation high, it's a lot of momentum, right? So sometimes they'll pull back. They'll retest the high because, of course, a lot of momentum. That's not a breakout yet. It's not a full breakout for the buyers yet. It's simply the buyers buying that pullback just that like we saw earlier, right? Look down here. Strong move down. They retest. Makes sense, right? Strong move up. They retest. It makes sense. They're going to want to retest because of all that momentum. Now, the buyers, professional buyers are buying low. Now, income the rookies dun, 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 right they come in they now try to be buying right into the high remember we need stops we need some sort of fuel to turn this thing around right There's a lot of momentum as it rotates off the low once we see and in the free trading course we call these failures okay this will be a two try failure we're going to rope in the buyers rookie buyers let them try a couple times and again use their stops as fuel for that short. Now remember, these double top reversals, these get pretty good because as those buyers fail and the market begins to reverse and run lower, now where does the market want to go? It wants to rotate back down again, right? It wants to go finish off that rotation back and forth. So now we get easy. Remember, we're an overall bear market. So now I can look for an add-on or a re-entry. I can mark a trend line off those lows. I can bring that channel down off that high, right? Look left, find that high, find that prior swing. And as I always say, don't miss that first test because the first test is the best test. Now, I'm keeping it simple right now. This could be a bull trap like I'm showing right here. It could be a buyer failure pattern, a pullback combination pattern, a strength set up just like you guys are learning in our free trading course which reminds me i know that i know that most of you guys and gals are using the free class you've learned all the setups you're making money on your account with them but hey if you're here for the first time right now if you're one of the few folks watching who haven't taken that free course yet what i'll do is i'll put a link up here for you in the upper right hand corner grab that link Take that free class because I'll tell you, the strategy that you'll learn in that free course will teach you a stupidly simple trick to within the first five or six minutes every morning, you'll know where the best trades are most likely to be that day. And I'll teach you four different entry patterns to help kickstart you making money. If, if you're tired of missing the best trades each day, if you're not getting the consistent results you want, definitely grab that link. Take the free course. It's perfect for someone trying to make a career or, or make the jump into full-time time trading you're going to love that free class and in that free class you'll learn all about right things like double tops one two stops as fuel and then grabbing that channel right and then hitting them off the top of that channel that's the second way we can trade this reversal the third way okay let's talk third way and then i'm going to talk about a buy up there all right and again i'm going to talk about going lower here in just a moment we're not we're, we're not done yet now let's say for example we make that run all the way back up but now because hello we're a very bear market right now again in the description you'll see those 60 minute time frames it's very difficult to call this a bull market overall again pretty bullish in the short term right now but overall bearish as we go higher we may walk into a brick wall of sellers up here and oftentimes those brick walls result in a v top and they just get crushed and they get ripped right back down into that range. Sometimes we don't get any signals, okay? That happens sometimes, it does, right? Uh, not likely, but hey, I wanna make sure you're aware of how to do this. If it V tops like this and begins to grind and grind and grind down, now where does the market wanna go? It wants to take out those lows, right? It wants to rotate back and forth in this range. So now what do you do is you don't chase it. Okay, you don't chase it. That's the last thing you want to do now because you're selling too low. Find that new, find that trend line off that low. 
bring it up around that high now. And what I do is I go look and left and I find swings, find swings. And I look for, you know, again, any, uh, any of the, any of my entry patterns you guys learn in the free class, right? So bull traps, buyer failures, pullback combos off the top of that channel. Okay, that's the way you trade a V top, right? A V top kind of pops up and again, just gets crushed as it rips right back down into that trading range. So three different ways to trade reversals. This one, of course, is the least desirable, but hey, you know, sometimes we sometimes we take whatever the market gives us, right? That's all we can do. Now, uh, the big question now is, if we go higher, at what point could I call this a full-blown reversal? And where do the buyers want to go? The buyers have a pretty easy job. I mean, not not easy job, but pretty easy target, right? They've got those big, big levels back there, right? From what is that last week, right before the holiday weekend? So we know where the market wants to go if the buyers can get their hands on this thing. The Nasdaq has its own set of targets overhead, which we'll grab here um, in a moment. Now, if we do take out that high. Again, I'm still looking for what? I'm looking for buyers struggling and back into that range. But guys, the buyers, you know, who knows, right? Who knows? We haven't seen a deep pullback in a long time. The buyers may easily take that high out. They may hold the pullback off the moving average, and they may jump right on through those highs up there. Okay, I call this a one, two, three breakout. One, two, three. Now, promise me. Do not let that first leg fool you. We see a lot of times that we see strong pullbacks like this and they just get clobbered and get run right back over again. So promise me you're not going to see that strong leg and go, oh, that's really strong. I'm going to buy this because, again, the odds are not very good. That works. The better odds are let those buyers, let those inexperienced rookies, let them churn that thing up up there and sell into their stops, right? That's a higher probability trade in this situation. However, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Even a 30% winner is still going to be successful 30 out of 100 times if that does happen right here. And again, like I said, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? We have to be prepared for whatever the market gives us that we can make money no matter what the market throws at us. If we hold off that pullback and we jump, as I always say in my trade room, we need a convincing jump, right, through these areas of resistance. If I can see a strong convincing jump off it, okay, not what I expected, but I'm going to trade it. We'll mark off that high now. We'll mark off that low. See what I'm doing? Find that new channel. Remember, at this point, all you have to work with is, is those highs right there. So you connect those highs, you take that trend line, you bring it down to that low, that finds your hidden channels, we call it. My students call them professional channels. And again, we want that first test. Get below a prior swing, that's where traps live. Get below with a moving average, that's where failures live. Get back above the 21 EMA, that's a failure into pullback combination. And again, we have a pretty good idea of where the market wants to go. Trap, failure, pullback, strength move, right? You guys learn that stuff in the free trading class, all right? So that's the way you wanna trade this thing. If we do end up going higher, we don't fail, we keep on going, right? That's the way you wanna trade it. All right, guys, I think we've got this pretty well nailed down as the market goes higher. The big question now is, is how do we short this thing? Could we short this thing going lower? Can we buy it as we go higher, right? I think there's definitely more ways to skin the cat. The S&P looks pretty good here for that rotation. Let's grab a look at the NASDAQ because, of course, the NASDAQ is similar, right? It is similar, but boy, is it a little bit different, right? You'll notice here right away the NASDAQ. And once again, I, I hope you watched last night's video. If you didn't watch last night's video, I would definitely go back to my YouTube channel, watch that video from last night because we talked all about these perfect pullbacks, right? Using that first leg right there. I mean, like I said earlier, you know, perfect with a capital perfect on that on that pullback level. So again, hopefully, so hopefully you guys made some pretty good money off of at least one of those trades we talked about in last night's video. So the big difference right now in the NASDAQ is the fact that we are rotating, but we're obviously rotating right back to the high, right, of this of this range. The most important thing right now on the NQ is we've now completed this rotation. 
Now, the S&P and NASDAQ, they have a funny way of kind of leading one or the other. So because the S&P has still room to go, right, there's a good chance the NASDAQ might make that big jump going higher. So you want to be aware of that same kind of process we talked about on the S&P, the crown reversal, right, the double top uh, reversal, right, the breakout for sure. I think buyers have a pretty, a pretty good chance for a breakout, the breakout target. If the buyers get what they want for tomorrow, they'll run this thing up to that 12 265 level potentially all the way up to that 12 300 area that would be the big breakout target and again you know we might see stuff like where one two three get that channel run it up crown reversal off the high right so we may definitely get that sequence I just described on the S&P, but it may be a little bit higher, right, on the NASDAQ. So, you know, again, take what I, t- take what, take what I mentioned the S&P and kind of project it a little bit higher here on the NASDAQ. Now I want to talk about as we go lower, if we can get this thing to go lower, because, of course, the NASDAQ right now, they're at that area, right? They're at that area. So as we're going lower here, how could I, how, how could I short this thing? Or how could I buy it off of right off of that low? Let's talk about this. So we 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 mentioned a couple of these on the S and P, right? So it's a very strong rotation. So again, it's the crown reversal, right off the high. It's the double top reversal, which again, double top meaning retest one, two, and then back down, right? The big one is is that is that channel trap. So let's say, for example, right, we kind of go higher, we come right back down again. There's that channel, that new channel here. That's another way. Again, we talked about this before, but it's a little bit different look to it, right? That channel trap as we're going, you really do want that trap on these because again, that rotation off the off the low is so uh, aggressive, right? So you do want that bull trap that kind of ch- what I call a channel trap here uh, going going lower here. And then if we can find our way down into these lows down here, right? Find our way into, you know, either that big low at 034, right? This kind of medium term low at 48 and a quarter, you know, we're, remember, we are overall a bear market right now on the NASDAQ and the S&P. So as we go, right, if we end up making our way back to that low now, again, you're going to want to use that two-try rule, right? So just as we saw today, right, where we, we run lower, the bears once, the bears twice, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? You, you remember, we're, we're overall bearish. We're overall bullish, right? If this was a, if we had a bullish market into a trading range, I would say, hell yeah, let's get a aggressive down there right buy those dips you know it would be it'd be a lot more aggressive entry strategy if we were more bullish overall we're not though right so as we go lower i'm looking for things like the crown reversal right going higher i'm looking for things like that double bottom reversal and again when i say double bottom reversal i simply mean strong move down they retest the low then we trap in some rookies one to let them sell a couple times because again momentum is very bearish in this example and so you want to make sure you're trapping those bears in and using their stops as fuel right to kind of turn the thing around so once you know where their stops are then you can simply punch it and buy right back up in again and again after those failures we oftentimes see the market now right cranking higher find that new channel and then again, like I mentioned on the S&P, right, I love to look for, as we go higher here, I like to look for those little traps, right? So just like we're talking about right now on the S&P a moment ago, that kind of trap off of that low or traps in general as we try to get that rotation, you know, going higher. Make sense? All right, so a lot of the same stuff we've covered on the S&P could really just be kind of carbon copy, but flipped, right, on, on, on his side here, on his back here, right, coming in off of the low. And then, of course, the big question now is, is as we go lower, can we actually sell down here? Well, I'll tell you, it's not going to be easy. Um, if you go down the description of the YouTube video, Again, you'll see four-hour charts down there. You'll see 60-minute time frames. There was another level here on the S&P as well, if you recall. And again, you'll see this on the, yeah, there's a quite a few, quite a few big levels right below us here. Um, and so my game plan is just be careful, right? Be careful as we go lower here because we may end up rolling through it. Just be careful getting caught selling down here. There's a big, big support level down here. I would love to get this thing down around these lows. And again, some 
crown reversals, right? Going back higher, those double bottom reversals, going back higher, right? And getting back up into this trading range. You know, in, 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 all, in all reality, we may keep getting these big moves down into these very, very big bounces, right? And so even though we're pretty bearish overall, there's money to make every time we retest those lows, trap bears in and bounce back up. Right, you know, it's, it's very basic stuff, right? It's buy low, sell high, right? But you know, look at this on like a 60-minute time frame, or you know, a little bit, little bit, little bit bigger picture time frame. All, all we're doing right now is this: every time we take those lows out, we trap in the bears, use stops as fuel, right? Run it back higher. Once we get up around the highs, we, we it's a bull trap, right? Back down to those lows. It's just basic stuff, right? Buy low, sell high. It's just as a day trader, you get so wrapped up in that short-term momentum that you kind of forget where you are um, in the forest, if you will, right? All right, so that's the goal here on the NASDAQ. Again, it looks like because the S&P has some more space to go here right now, uh, the NASDAQ may end up getting that big breakout target. So again, think, think about traps on the way higher. Think about those double top or crown reversals back down again. A lot of potential, a lot of potential for some really good trades tomorrow morning in our trade room. S&P's ready. NASDAQ's ready. Should we keep it going? How about some How about some oil? Oil's a relatively simple game plan right now. We're overall bearish with a strong move down, and we got some major support levels waiting down below us here right now. So in a nutshell, we also, of course, can see have that potential perfect pullback that we talked about in last night's video, right? There's that big move down. That is the first big pullback we saw. And again, if you watched last night's video, this gives us kind of a measured pullback. This is the same strategy that would have helped you pick that top on the S&P and the NASDAQ uh, here today. So knowing that, knowing that that could be the perfect pullback also too, and hopefully you're seeing this right now, this could be the perfect pullback too, right? So, you know, I'm not I'm not blind to the fact that this could also be the perfect pullback as well, right? The channel makes it pretty easy on that one. So knowing that we have a very strong move down, right? We're pretty bearish overall. I would definitely recommend if you're an oil trader, make sure you see those four hour time frames and the 60 minute time frames down the description because you'll see we pretty much have a big, big target right now on 7246. It's, it's, it's embarrassingly easy to see why. You'll see what I'm talking about when you see that chart, right? It's very, very obvious. The question, of course, is, is how we get there, right? What is likely is, is as we start running the support, we get some bounces, and we short the bounces, right? Now the bounce might be a bit, more, might be a bit, bit, a bit uh, bigger if I can get it out of my out of my mouth. Let's see here. So strong move down. Bears have control. We want to short those bounces. So as we pull up, think about well, basically right there. You know, we talk about this a lot in our in our free course, right? We go lower, we pull back, we trap in the buyers above the 21 moving average, we get below the EMA. What do we call that in the video course, in the free class, right? We call this failure into pullback combo. So take that, put it right there, right? Get above, get above the 21 moving average, trap those buyers in the failure, right? Grab that pullback combination as we go. Okay, that is a good setup in this situation because it's a, such, it's, it's a very strong move down right now. What you almost have to hope for right now, though, is you almost have to hope we get a bigger pullback, you know, something up around this area because then you get a lot more profit to make, right? Then, then the potential for the profit goes way, way higher now. So if we do get that deeper pullback now, now remember, deep pullbacks are great for making a lot of money, right? Because you can take a small amount of risk for a really big amount of reward. But remember, anytime, anytime you have a lopsided risk reward ratio, a, a, a risk reward ratio like that, you pay a price for that. Okay, there's no free lunch in this world. You pay a price to get that. And what is the price? It's momentum, right? It's a very strong pullback now. So you can't just go out and sell it up there. You want to wait for those buyers now to try. In this case, try twice. Okay, why twice? Because of momentum, right? The buyers are more inclined now to hold this and rip this thing, right? That's why deep pullbacks can be challenging. So we let them try once. We let them try twice. Let those buyers, again, let them pile in on this. That way you have all of that rocket fuel, right? All those stops, no pun, okay, maybe a little pun intended there, right? With oil price, right? With it being oil. But, you know, get that gasoline, right? To run this thing back down again. 
I hope that makes sense, right? The size of the pullback determines how much momentum is in play. This, the, the amount of momentum determines what type of entry setup we're going to use. Does that make sense, right? Hopefully that's some light bulb for you going off uh, here in this video tonight because once you learn, once you learn how to use the size of the pullback, because again, the pullback size tells you momentum, right? Just, just by definition. And the more momentum it is, the more you have to respect those buyers, the more you respect the buyers, right? The pay, more patient you are. And then once they try a couple times, we'll lift that short back down again. Now remember, if we do get that deep pullback, if the buyers come in and what do we always say? If they blast, if they jump off the moving average, again, probably going to fail above the moving average, right? At least until we get that that big target we, we mentioned earlier uh, taken out there. But if they do come in to hold that pullback, if they do come in to hold that pullback and they blast running higher, now mark off that high, right? Mark off that low, drill down and find one of the entries. Again, could be a trap setup, could be a failure setup, right? find those entries off the low. And where do you think the buyers want to go? They're going to want to go take out these big highs up here, right? That's 77, 74. It's a pretty obvious big objective at that point. If they really get the party going, there's a big range up there around 79. I mean, that would be where the buyers would love to get. But again, so overall, kind of a bear market right now, right? So it's difficult to think we're going to go all the way that far. So keep your eyes open on that. Again, that deeper pullback using the size of that previous pullback as kind of your guide. Now, if we keep going lower, right, if we keep going lower, the game plan doesn't change. You know, if we keep going lower, all we do is, again, wait for the pullback, trapping the buyers, back to those lows. Get the deeper pullback, right? Deeper pullback. How deep? Probably about that deep, right? Probably about that deep. We don't know exactly how far it'll go lower right now, so I can't tell you exactly where it is, but we know how deep the deep pullback is going to be. Once we get that deep pullback, again, deep pullbacks come at a price. Let them try once, twice to, again, absorb that momentum and use their stops as fuel. And again, to try failure, once it starts to make that roll lower, where does the market want to go? It wants to take out that low. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect a retest of that low. At this point now, I can mark off that low for a trend line, find that for a channel, and I can go looking left and find that first test is the best test. We talked about this earlier on both the S&P and the NASDAQ, right? As it goes higher, we trap in the buyers. We don't try to pick the top. We trap the top, you stops as fuel, then as we roll over, now momentum, think about that, momentum is so much stronger now for the bears once we begin to roll over, and I can get a lot more aggressive on that entry now because now the gig is up, right? We already know the buyers fell flat on their face. We know where the market wants to go now. I could be a lot more aggressive with a bull trap or a simple buyer failure off the high of that channel. All right. And then, you know, like we talked about last night, don't be surprised, right? If we go up, failure off the high, back down to that low, and then what? Double bottom, right? So literally the exact same strategy we talked about 24 hours ago is the same idea here, right? We trap at the lows, bears come in, one, two. This is nothing more than those double bottom reversals. You know, we talked about the double top reversals on the S&P and NASDAQ. This is the same thing. It's just the opposite direction, right? So trap those bears in. Remember, professional sellers are, are, are getting short right there. Professional sellers are selling high, okay? These are rookies down here. Rookies have small accounts. They have very little risk tolerance. They're not going to defend themselves very well. You can literally punch right into their stops and get that where, where? Go back to that high, right? Just like we're seeing right now develop on the S&P and the NASDAQ, all right? And if they keep going, if they keep going, that becomes a breakdown. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. But be, just be, be, be careful, though. Be careful. Like the S&P and NASDAQ, be careful chasing stuff going lower. If it keeps on going lower, wait for the pop, right? Trap in, back to those lows, double bottom, bam. I'll tell you, if they go lower overnight and run right into this four-hour objective, this double bottom reversal becomes a very potential, very big reversal because, again, it's a huge level of support on the four-hour time frame. All right, guys, I hope that makes sense, right? Am, am I making sense out there? I would love to hear some feedback uh, in the comments. If you guys have any feedback on this, what is what is your ideas for tomorrow? Uh, I'd love to know what you guys are thinking on this stuff as well. 
And of course, always looking to, uh, to hear from you guys in the comment section. All right, let's wrap things up tonight. A relatively short video here tonight. The game plan is pretty straightforward for tomorrow. So the game, the name of the game tomorrow on the S&P and the NASDAQ are reversals, reversals. And again, potentially some breakouts going higher here. I'm getting excited just talking about this stuff here tonight. That's why I love doing these videos. Okay, the game plan is ready. We, we planned our trades. Tomorrow, we'll trade the plan together. Uh, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. As always, I'll put all of the all the membership links, all the free course links, all of the additional time frames I talk about. I'll drop those in the description of the video here tonight. If you need any help at all about getting into the classes or anything at all, the easiest way to get help is to pick up the phone, call the office, or, or send us an email, use live chat chat we're always here all right we're always here we're very easy to reach i definitely do not get to the comment section as fast as i'd like to i'm unfortunately a pretty busy person with all of our students all over the world uh but the easy way to get help is call the office we're here to help out with any questions or any any challenges you might have out there getting into the free the free classes or anything we talk about here tonight on the video all right guys i'm gonna wrap things for now have a fantastic fantastic rest of your day thank you so much for tuning in and watching now get some rest Make some money tomorrow. Hope I'll see you tomorrow morning in the trade room. If not, we'll come back tomorrow night and get ready for a very big Friday trading session. This week is flying right by. All right, guys. Be well. Be nice to each other out there, will you? And you better, you better be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.